So, in today's class, we'll be going through threads. In the previous classes, we learned hash map, hash table, we learned our alias, everything. Now, we'll move further and we'll go through threads, okay? So, moving for forward, first of all, what is a thread? A thread is a part of execution in the program. So, what is the use? The Java Virtual Machine allows an application to have multiple threads of execution running concurrently so that you can get the multitasking feature available in your system, in your application. So you have got different, you can use different threads so that multiple tasks are done simultaneously in the background. Okay, so one thread will do one particular thing, the second thread will do something at the same time. This way you're saving a lot of time or a lot of time as well as your application is becoming fast okay that is why we use thread as well as they are very lightweight okay they're lighter than procedure and processes so it takes less memory as well as the execution is faster now let's see a small diagram where threads are used in our day-to-day day -day lives in our computer so you've got your supercomputer right here anything that is your computer now with that computer you've got playing video, you've got other tasks, you've got notepad opened up, downloading files, playing games, browse internet, music player. So all these things you can use simultaneously. You would have used it on your system as well. As well. So have you used it? Let me know. Do you do multiple tasks all together? Yeah exactly so how it is done it is done through threads okay these are all different threads that are working simultaneously that are running simultaneously now let's consider one example that of okay Nikhil says I'm downloading a torrent right now so, exactly you're taking class and you're downloading a torrent right now so that is multitasking now similarly when we talk about a music player we talk about one thread even in that particular thread you've got different threads working that is playing songs managing playlists accessing internet downloading updates okay so you've got multiple threads working all over the place like anything okay they make the processing faster it provides you multitasking music player is an actually an application okay the previous slide I, if I say these are threads so for a supercomputer these are different threads right for a supercomputer, these are different threads, but when you go inside, so music player is on itself is an application. In that application, you've got different things present over here. So these are different threads for a music player, right? So this was just for the idea so that you can understand what is the function of a thread and why do we use it for achieving the multitasking. Now, why do we use it? Threads is a lightweighted process as it shares the same memory and the resources of the process in which it is created. Okay, so since it shares a particular kind of memory in which it is created, so all these threads will be using the same memory. This way, they do not re need much resources and they are very lightweighted hence. Okay, so that is why we use thread in our day-to-day -day applications that we make. This could be a diagram. So it will be using the resources that are available in the process right here in this particular process itself. So threads, threads and different threads. It will be using the same resource but and hence it will be lighter than others, lighter than processes. Okay, because process require a different resource for itself so that it could run. Now let's see a very small life cycle of a thread. Okay, so first of all your thread starts new program starts thread your program will be starting the thread using the runnable you can you make the thread wait using the wait function that is available and it will be unlocked okay you can send your thread to sleep it will be sleeping for some time and again it will start executing so you can stop your thread using a sleep function that is available similarly when the task is completed thread completes task it gets terminated it ends after that okay this is a small life cycle it can go to wait it can be sleep put into sleep as well as when the work of the thread is finished it will finally die it will get terminated okay so I hope you are clear with this small diagram moving on 
now thread methods that are available for you okay Mohsin says yes clear you create a new thread okay when you have to start you'll be using t.start t is a thread so when you have to start you'll be calling this function that is t.start it will come to ready state after that you can notify t.notify or notify all these are the two functions that are available because simultaneously there could be many threads running and when you have to send a message to any other thread what you can use you can use notify t dot notify or you can use the notify all function that is available for you now after the starting the thread if you want to run the thread I'm oh, sorry I just told you notify first after starting the thread you'll be running the thread by using t dot run it comes to the running state either after running it executes the complete task and go to the terminated state or else you can send the thread to sleep by using t dot sleep or t dot wait okay now this at this particular state it is blocked the thread is not doing anything okay it is stagnant at that particular moment after that when it is coming back to the ready state it will notify the other threads that I'm coming back by using t dot notify or notify all again it will come here t dot run come to the running state do its job and finally terminate it or comes back here so this is the life cycle uh, this is the functions those are called in the life cycle of a thread now there's one more property there's one more thing that is available with a thread that is thread priorities okay when th multiple threads are running the order of execution of threads depend on priority given to the thread okay different thread you can provide priority to a different thread now it when multiple threads are running it it will be running on the basis of priority if you want okay if you put the priority one two and then seven so first one will get executed first then two and then seven okay so priority value ranges from one to ten and the default value is five because it could be that you haven't defined the priority of your thread in that case it will take the default one that is equals to five okay and in order to set the priority of a particular thread you'll be using set priority end priority You'll pass the priority within that it could be 1 till 10 and method to set priority this is the method to set priority so if the thread name is T then you will writing P dot set priority brackets int priority that could be 1 to 10 okay so I hope you are clear with priority as well what is the priority of a thread now creation of threads in multiple ways they, threads can be created in two ways implementing runnable interface or you can use extending threads class you've got a class that is thread using that class you can create a particular thread or you can use a runnable interface that is available in Java using which you can implement that interface and you can create a particular thread okay so you've got two ways in Java runnable interface and thread class now first of all implementing runnable interface how to create a thread using the runnable interface so the code is like this you have a class that is thread class you implement runnable okay as soon as you implement runnable you have a method that is public void run and within that you write system dot out print ln hello from a thread okay so it will be creating one thread now you come to the main class using the thread class object you'll write thread class object equal to new thread class that is object of class thread class which will be a thread so thread 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 underscore runnable is equal to new thread you pass the object within that okay so this is the function that you have to use this is a thread class you write thread runnable and you write new thread you pass the object within that and hence using this you can start the thread that is dot start okay so let's see the example on Eclipse now. Okay. So first of all, I come to creating threads. First through runnable. So I have my examples. Thread class, I've got thread class equal to implement thread. And I implement the runnable interface. Within that, I have a function that is run. Okay. Okay, add an implemented method. So as soon as you implement a interface that is runnable, you'll have this method that is public void run and 
within that you can print a statement okay whenever the thread runs hello from a thread and now you come to the main method in the main method what you did thread class object new thread class you created the object of class that is you defined right here thread class then using the thread you've got a class thread available in Java so using that you write thread write thread runnable you make an object you write new thread and you pass the object of this class in which you have implemented the runnable interface you pass the object and finally thread underscore runnable dot start your thread will start executing so when I run this code okay as you can see hello from a thread okay so this is a thread that is running right now now we'll be using the second thing that is extending thread class now what I do I have the same class that is thread class extends thread I have the function like system hello from a thread again now package come a direka in that I create an object okay similarly so I get back to my presentation I go to the second one I'll just close this one main thread thread class okay so thread class extends thread and when I come here I create do the same thing this time I'm doing by extending the thread class and I either pass the object into that when I run this code I have hello from a thread okay this time I'm extending a class that is thread right here now we have got the thread class I extend this class that is thread I have got I implemented a method so that I can understand that I'm using this class right I come to the main class in this I have created an object of this cl class itself that is thread class obj new thread class now you could think that since I've extended the class I can use obj dot start but that will give you an error why it is because what you're doing yeah you, you cannot access a method that is start okay it is not defined I'll just show you once again when you come here you'll find that the method start is undefined for the type thread class okay hence you cannot use the start method to start the thread you'll have to pass this object into thread class itself on an object of thread class and then only you can use the function that is start then only it will start a particular thread okay like you have got the start okay synchronized void start you can define it right here as well and in which it is calling super dot start so you can use this function right here in your main thread okay so if I write let's try it rule 7 I come on the top obj dot this time I'll have a new thread class thread class I've got a function that is start okay then means we can implement runnable and extend thread also yes Arun you can do that okay and the thing that I was trying to do I'll just try it and I'll post it on the community itself now we were on methods that are available with threads so you've got int get priority for getting the priority of that particular thread void set priority you can set the priority as int new priority you can pass within that void sleep that will be of long milliseconds void join will be also on long milliseconds threads current thread get state set name get state and now this there is a difference between get state one is returning a thread the other is returning the string now void start run wait notify notify all stop and yield okay these are the different methods that are available with threads you can try each and every one of them one by one okay